Um, members, I'm going to start off our recollections about Representative Loeffler. And I would ask that those members and staff who are not staying in the chamber for um, recognition of Representative Loeffler would leave um, silently and respectfully. Um, folks who know Diane and her service here at the Minnesota House of Representatives know that she was uh, nothing if not thorough. And so um, I have just a couple little remembrances that that to me capture the spirit of, of what it meant to serve with Diane. We came in together in 2004. Uh, we were classmates and, um, you know, you develop a closer bond with your classmates. Uh, when we won the majority in the fall of 2018, I sent an email to members and I asked for a little help putting together a new committee structure. And um, I needed short bullet points because we had to move pretty quickly. Uh, Representative Loeffler sent me seven pages, single space. <laughs> and then at the end of this session, as we were uh, starting to have our media department construct our legislative reports and we hadn't gotten everything all pretty and finalized to send out to our constituents, uh, she sent me a list of uh, the um, top accomplishments of the session and the top disappointments of the session, and each of those had 20 bullet points. But I think it's worth it to, uh, to share with you the top three uh, accomplishments that she shared and the top three disappointments. I'll start with the top three disappointments she had. Um, it tells you a little bit about what she was dedicated to. Uh, we had no proposals to accelerate the use of renewable energy and address the climate crisis signed into law. We had no significant funding for comprehensive transportation, all modes. Uh, leaving behind transit service improvements and needed funds for roads and bridges. She was especially dedicated to her transit dependent um, constituents. And we had uh, no probation reform enacted into law. And her top accomplishments, uh, they were three of the top accomplishments of the legislative session and she had a significant role in each of the three. First, she said preserving the provider tax which will secure health care funding for long term um, for Minnesotans for more than a million people and um, it will support prevention and other efforts to control health care cost increases. She was the chief house author. She also touted our reshaping of our income tax system to put workers and their families first, and she was an author of parts of that provision, and she was also on the tax conference committee. And finally, she felt one of our top accomplishments last session was ending the requirement that to qualify for health coverage, many people with disabilities and seniors in frail health would have to live on less than 20% uh, of the poverty level. And um, everybody here who worked with her knows that Diane uh, was an especially fierce advocate for the poor. And she said, being very poor is always difficult, even more so when severely ill or disabled. So uh, it was an honor for me to serve with Diane and we will really miss her. I'd like to recognize Representative Joachim. It's still hard for me to believe that we're not gonna see Diane's warm and smiling face on this floor again. I was lucky to sit next to her for two years and learn so very much from her as many of us did. Not only was Diane a tireless public servant, but she was a quiet mentor. She nudged us in the right direction she educated us on issues and empowered us to raise our voices. Her depth of knowledge in health and human services and property taxes was legendary. Many of us would visit her desk to ask her to explain very complicated bills. More than that, she was a compassionate and caring person. She always had time for a conversation, a quick cup of coffee or lunch. And Diane was very sincere when she asked you, how are you doing? Selfishly, I'm going to miss our quality time on the floor, especially late at night when we'd write funny notes to each other. A lot of you don't realize those notes and Diane kept me from saying some interesting things into this microphone. Um, she was a tireless advocate for the North Side. And she set the bar high when it came to public service. She never forgot the community she served. Diane, we will truly miss you and we can only hope to carry on the hard work that you did for the citizens of Minnesota. 
Representative Lilly. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Diane's a good friend and good friend of Minnesota. Um, I just want to speak a little bit. Uh, we're all, uh, like Representative Hortman mentioned, we were classmates. Uh, uh, Representative Cresha and I were, and Joachim were involved with the freshmen this year, and I could probably heard me mention some of our class. I'm kind of proud of our class. Uh, Speaker Hortman, uh, Secretary of State Simon, Congressman Emmer, uh, Leader Pepin and Dean and the gang over there in the corner and uh, many of us other members, but uh, it's really an amazing group, but uh, um, Diane was right up there at the top. Uh, she was super bright. I remember one of the first things that Matt Intenza took us into the room and he says, hey, what, what, what committees do you want to be on? And uh, I probably had a different answer than Diane. I said, anything but human services. <laughs> because you know, she, she took on the tough stuff and taxes and um, all that very smart stuff, but she could talk to us old hockey players too. Um, she's super kind and we all saw that in different ways. I've had some handwritten notes that were just incredible. Um, just, you know, I don't know, my grandma had pen, penmanship like that, but I don't know many people other than her and Diane that had this beautiful penmanship, and it was just from the heart. And uh, she was right there when I was going through my stuff, and, you know, she, I feel bad I really wasn't there for her. I don't think she really told a lot of us And uh, when she was going through her journey. And, you know, we each choose to go through our stuff how we need to go through it, and I think that was her path, but... Um, <laughs> Just amazing. She, uh, you know, she really loved her district, and she was a fighter for it. And uh, just the other day, I was, you know, I was hearing Kauli uh, uh, speak, and she got up and she said, you know, I'm here at 1 a.m. I'm still working and uh, fighting for the district. And that's what Diane was. And, uh, and she was really uh, into fighting and working hard. And like that 20 point thing you're talking about, that's amazing. <laughs> you probably get a couple sentences out of me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she knew all our bills. You know, I'm with Legacy. She knew my bill as, as well as I did. And uh, she knew all of our stuff uh, throughout the building. But it's neat to look around the room because she lives in so many of you with uh, Cheryl Joachim and like uh, Kali back there and others, you know, that uh, carry on her spirit and her fight. But um, I always loved her flowers but, and just bringing that joy. But Mike, thank you. Uh, our thoughts are with you and your family and thank you for sharing her with us. And I know you're very much a team and uh, you know, we need a team to do what we do and thank you for that. And uh, thank you to the district that sent her and to fight for all of Minnesota. The member from Dakota, Representative Garofalo. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker and members, and as was mentioned before, uh, I, too, was elected at the same time as Representative Loeffler, and I think one of the things that we can all learn from Diane is that uh, Diane Loeffler did not have a mean bone in her body. She did not have a drop of anger or, a or hatred in her blood. And I know this because I've been told I have the ability of extracting meanness out of people uh, through the years. And uh, she was kind, she was gentle, but it would be a mistake to misinterpret Diane's um, niceness or lack of meanness as weakness. Uh, she was an incredibly strong woman, principled, and she fought. Uh, but she did it in a dignified and respectful way that is more rare than common. And if there's something that we can honor uh, Diane by if we, as we go forward, is to have a little bit more of Diane Lawfleur in each of us. Uh, we are, Minnesota is a sadder place and the legislature uh, is a less skilled place in her absence and I, for one, will miss her tremendously. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Mason. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Diane Loeffler was somebody I truly admired. She was a model legislator. She was knowledgeable in so many areas, whether it was health care, taxes, and definitely the state capitol. And she was always willing to help, regardless of how busy she was. 
She wasn't the type that sought publicity for what she was doing. She just worked really hard, tirelessly, to get the job done for her constituents and for the state of Minnesota. She will be very much missed. Representative Erdahl. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, I worked with Diane on many committees and projects over the years. I came to appreciate her passion and commitment. While well, this was evidenced in many areas, it was most real to me when we began the project to restore our Capitol building. Diane loved this building and shared concerns that we do something to address the drastic state of disrepair to which it was descending. The discussion to get something done had been ongoing for almost 20 years. The dispute wasn't so much partisan as it was between the House and the Senate. And Diane helped to bridge that gap. Besides the reconstruction, Diane was deeply involved in the future of this building. What should be done with the art? How should the public be better able to use the Capitol? And there was one particular area in which Diane became particularly determined, the, lo the loggia. The second floor balcony facing the mall was closed to the public. Diane wanted to see it opened. Objections were raised. The railing was too low. There were too many birds creating a mess. Would it have to be supervised? Diane was not deterred. She insisted that a way be found, and it was. In good weather, the loggia is now open to legislators and the general public alike. It is something that would not have happened without Diane's insistence and should be recognized as the Loeffler loggia. We owe her a depth of gratitude for it. Representative Marquardt. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. And uh, I served with Representative Loeffler for most of her 15 years as either a tax committee member or a property tax committee member. And as mentioned already, she had this wealth of knowledge, not only in property taxes and taxes, but which was very unique is also the health and human services. Here we had someone on tax committee who actually understood health and human services, and that was invaluable. And as important as her with all the knowledge, I think her really, her, the real strength was, as mentioned before, her professionalism and the dignity that she approached this chamber and each and every one of us here. And she was passionate about issues, the working family credit, she was a champion for that. And beware to the property tax chairperson who dared mess with the renter's credit. <laughs> uh, but also a great example is how she dealt with that. And it was her facts and her figures and her research. And then it was her kindness and courtesy that would win the day. And we are truly going to miss that in this chamber. And Michael, uh, we know it is a lot of sacrifice and dedication uh, as a member of the family with someone in the legislature. And thank you for sharing those 15 wonderful years that we all very much benefited from here in this chamber. Representative Jordan. Um, it's really great to hear everyone talk about and remember what an incredible legislator and advocate she was for all of us, her constituents. We saw that every day, so it's so great to see her acknowledged by her wonderful co-workers and colleagues. Um, you know, <laughs> Diane did especially care for the most vulnerable Minnesotans. She was a tireless and fierce advocate for our neighbors experiencing mental illness or struggling with addiction or homelessness. She knew the ins and outs of health and human service policy and was not afraid to share those with you. Um, and she could really look at a budget and find the most money for the smallest organization that had a real impact on our lives and in her district. Um, you know, as a constituent, the thing I'll remember most is just the way Diane was everywhere. You know, you couldn't, it was everywhere from a neighborhood meeting to just running into her at the co-op or out to eat. Um, and she always took time to talk to you 
Um, she learned and remembered your name immediately, um, but she also really remembered what inspired you and drove you to live in our neighborhood and make the world a better place. She followed up with the answer to your question and the answer to the next three questions you had. Um, she was really hardworking, but she was also really kind. She sent thank you notes. She remembered your partner's name and their birthday. Um, she was genuinely happy for us, our, her constituents, when we succeeded. And she mourned with us when we struggled. Um, and her compassion is really what I'll miss most about Diane. Um, and I know Diane's commitment to this chamber and to the Minnesota House. I really hope we can honor her legacy this year in this session to come by showing up, working hard, and, and putting others first. Um, I know um, we won't forget the people, the real people whose lives we all seek to improve. So, so thank you, Mike. Thank you, Elaine. Um, and thank you, Diane. Thank you for your love and your hard work from all of your constituents in 60A. Um, We're so lucky you chose to serve. Representative Noor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Members, Representative Diane Lafla. Diane actually welcomed me in my neighborhood when I lived in Northeast Minneapolis. She made sure everybody was welcome, and she always told them, I'm there for you. Just before I joined her here last year, she dedicated her life to serve everybody. She meant a lot to me and to the people of Northeast and Southeast Minneapolis. She was my personal mentor. I'll miss her fierce dedication to doing what is right, to fight for the people of Minnesota. To Mike and Lane and Diane's family, our thoughts and prayers are with you. We know what she had done for the people of Minnesota. We will never forget. Diane will be missed. Her physical presence is gone. But what she taught us in life will stay with us forever. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Representative Hurtas. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Uh, I would like to reflect on Diane uh, as a matter uh, of many of the things that have already been said, but I'd like to express uh, the issue of collegiality, uh, getting to know Diane. Now, many of us, when we have the opportunity to serve in this fine institution, we sometimes come here as freshmen with the idea that we're going to fight, we're going to do things for our constituents. And when I first arrived in my freshman year eight years ago, I uh, confided in then one of our <clears throat> minority leads, uh, Kelby Woodard, uh, how disappointed I was that I didn't get any of the committee assignments that were on my list, or at least not the priorities. The strong background in business and having worked in healthcare and a healthcare provider, I really wanted to be on commerce and HHS. I didn't get either one of those things. But if it weren't for Kelby Woodard, I probably wouldn't have gotten to know Diane as well as I did. And so he told me, he said, well, Hertos, um, I had something to do with that because, you know, we looked at incoming freshmen and we wanted you on finance kind of types of things with your background. So with that, um, on the property tax committee and the taxes, as Representative Marquardt mentioned, there's a group of us, and it is probably true with all of the other divisions and committees where you get to know people really well, and there's, if you're here any length of time, you get to know these people even better. And uh, Diane and I, Representative Marquardt, Representative Erickson, Representative Draskowski, many of us, all uh, served in the area of tax and the finance issues. And I had several vigorous debates in property tax, uh, as it would be kind of go back and forth with Diane, and that provided me the opportunity to really get, her, get to know her better because it was so often that uh, after committee, uh, the discussion would ensue in the hallway, uh, maybe would continue in her office, maybe in my office, and uh, as the years went by and as we continued our tenure in these committees, more and more Diane would uh, reach out to me. And what we learn about collegi collegiality, if you really want to get anything done around here, you really have to uh, respect all of us, each other, which Diane was very good at. 
Um, we can vociferously disagree with some of the policies that we each kind of endear ourselves to, but nonetheless, I have a, a great respect for many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle for the passion that you have on an issue that you believe in. Doesn't mean I agree with it, but it, nonetheless, uh, this is something that Diane would do. And so when you would visit with Diane in her office, and many of you maybe did, you would look at her office and you'd wonder how could you lead anything in the way <laughs> your office was in disarray and all of these different things. But I knew, like myself, uh, especially in, in business, you know where every piece of paper is in this collage of things that are in your office. And we would uh, find ourselves so often very much aligned regardless of political affiliation on issues regarding property tax. You know, when we had the mini session, Madam Speaker, last October, um, it was my past health background when Diane came to me in the lobby at the hotel there and we started to talk and I looked at her and I thought something was wrong. And for those of you that knew Diane well, whether, you, whether she agreed or disagreed with you, oftentimes you'd see her eyes light up. They'd get that special little sparkle in her eyes. And as we were talking in October, the sparkle didn't seem to quite be there anymore. And we had some other plans after the mini session and I said to my wife when she picked me up in Winona, uh, we were on our road uh, west, I told my wife, I said, I don't think Diane is well. And only to find out a little bit later that maybe there was a reason that that twinkle was no longer present in her eye. So with that, I think um, the lessons of co congeniality and uh, working together to resolve the business of the people is what we're here for. And Diane was an exemplary example of just that. Representative Bernardi. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Mike, thank you for being here today. I know you were a great husband to her and you were her partner and friend and she talked about you often. And Sydney, her sister, I can only imagine how blessed you were to have her in your life because I felt blessed that she was in my life. She was my colleague. We served on committees together, but she was a trusted friend and a close confidant, and I will always carry her spirit with me. Okay, here we go. I'm falling apart here. It's just not the same without Diane. She was a quiet, effective leader. She was respected, she was strong, and she was persistent. She had a gentle, and she had such a beautiful spirit about her. She would bring flowers to brighten up the house floor, and she so often displayed her jewelry to me and to the art of the people from her community. I was so proud of the artists there. She was a fierce advocate for those who didn't have a voice whether it was transportation or health and human services or tax issues, she was there giving people voice who weren't at the table of power. And she had a deep love for her community. I didn't realize she was born, and this all makes sense. She was born in Minneapolis. She graduated from high school at Edison. She went to, graduated from Augsburg. She graduated from the University of Minnesota. It all makes sense. Minneapolis is, I know it means a, city, a water city or city water. Mini seems like a small word. And it's like she put hometown into such a big city for the love that she had for her neighbors and her community. Her experience, knowledge, and intelligence was unmatched in this legislature and how she put that to work for people that knowledge she had about health and human services, that she could do a deep dive to really make a difference in people's lives. In taxes too, she helped my community who had co-ops. Sounds simple, but they didn't get a, um, a renter's credit or um, their property tax refund. And she made that happen. And like I said, she's been a voice for people who haven't had a voice. I have a one of, one of um, Diane's last twi tweets that she wrote. And um, I remember this often, actually. The very last tweet she wrote, of course, was about um, giving praise and recognition to her co co colleague. And I don't know if you know this, Representative Cantrell, but it was about you. 
and closing the door softly and expecting an encore for you in the future, which I expect that too. <laughs> and um, the one before that was on November 11th and Diane passed away on November 16th. And what she said was, wind chill temps, question mark, exclamation point, exclamation point, too early, exclamation point. I can enjoy the bright sun and lengthening days of January and February. Fly me away from the short, gray, cold days of November. Maybe we remember her poetic beauty and strong leadership here in the Minnesota House of Representatives and carry that with us in all the work we do. Thank you for sharing her with us. Representative Vang. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, members, I had the pleasure of working with Diane on property taxes as her vice chair. Property taxes is not often a topic that everyone can excitedly talk about, but Diane always does. Her passion, depth of knowledge, and enthusiasm will greatly be missed. As a freshman legislator, I'm glad I got to experience my many firsts in her committee. She taught me how to chair a committee to tag teaming on bills. I'm thankful for her mentorship, patience, and kindness. From our short time together, she's shown me what it means to be a true public servant. I will miss her handwritten notes and her pretty flowers during floor sessions, her tireless dedication and love for the community would truly be missed. Thank you. Representative Cantrell. Thank you, Madam Speaker, members. This chamber feels a little less bright today without Representative Loeffler's presence and guidance and light to help show us the way through these complex policy conversations that we have that affect the lives of Minnesotans. I will never forget uh, when I received the email that, uh, that she had passed. It's a heavy burden to bear to be a survivor of cancer because we know that our position in that group is a temporary one at best. And we lose as many of our survivors as are added as time goes on. So I spent a couple of days pretty uh, entrenched in grief. And I canceled everything. And there was an event in Minneapolis when the city of Minneapolis was debating its ban on conversion therapy that I had considered canceling my attendance because I didn't feel that I had the, the strength at that time to stand up in front of people and talk with them about this really important measure, which Diane was a co-author on in the house. But then I thought about it a little bit more. I thought about what Diane would have wanted what she would have wanted from all of us, not just me then, but from all of us, is to fight even when we are feeling our worst, even in our darkest days, is to fight for people, to fight for the most vulnerable and forgotten people among us. Diane never forgot them. She never forgot the disenfranchised Minnesotans who for far too long have been left to languish in the neglect of a system that has never welcomed them. Diane welcomed them. She was the champion in which the vested hopes and dreams and fears of people could be ameliorated and carried so that they were reflected in the policies and the laws of our state. Anyone who lives with a chronic illness, or anyone in general, knows that there isn't a single day that's guaranteed to us because of Diane's legacy and her work, many Minnesotans can rest easy knowing that many, many more of their days may be guaranteed to them. 
and may their collective sighs of relief from those who now for the first time in their lives know comfort and peace because of Diane's service and legacy. May those sighs of relief carry her spirit onward and may she forever live within us and may she rest in peace. Thank you. Representative Liebling. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Of course, it's uh, hard to speak about Diane uh, without talking about some of the things that all of you have mentioned. And I, I have to say it's really heartwarming and meaningful to me to hear those things. And I, I hope that Mike and Elaine are feeling the same way. It, it is really, I, I really feel Diane, I feel her presence here with us today. I met Diane at orientation, which would have been late 2004, or early 2005, because I'm also a member of the same class with, with the speaker, with Representative Graflo, with Representative Hamilton, and others who are still here. And what a class it was. And there we were, we were brand new representatives. I had never visited the Capitol before since sixth grade, but there was Diane, and she was already fluent in all the policy and procedure. She already knew everything. And later I learned that she had been a policy analyst and a lobbyist. And she came in knowing everything when I knew nothing. Um, but she was really thrilled to be joining the legislature as a member after all that experience. And I remember she gave us all pens that said class of 2005. <laughs> I, I couldn't find mine to bring it today, but I will find it, and I'm going to put it on my desk, and maybe some of you have that as well. Uh, we served on HHS together for many years, both in the minority and in the majority. Diane, as it's been mentioned, was always full of ideas and suggestions. She was always ready to offer her expertise, and um, whether that was in the subject matter at hand or in ways to connect with constituents because as we've heard, she was a master of connecting with her community. She would notice things in bills that no one else noticed and I was never sure that I understood an HHS issue until Diane had had a look and I'd heard what she had to say about it and then I could feel confident. And as people have noticed also has said, she was a woman who really persisted. When she wanted something, she went after it, and she hung in there and until she wore down whoever was in her way sometimes, right? <laughs> we had enough in common, Diane and I, that people sometimes got us confused, right? Liebling and Loeffler, Loeffler and Liebling, it kind of went together. And whether it was our names or our interest area, our way of speaking maybe, or our appearance, we both thought it was very funny. And, uh, so uh, there's a little story that I've sometimes told, forgive me if you've already heard it, but we were together in one committee, we were in the minority, and um, the committee chair got us confused all the time. He would call us by the wrong name, so we switched our name plates just to help him out. <laughs> uh, minority leader Thiessen um, had uh, appointed us at one time to be co-leads on the HHS Finance Committee, which I now chair. And I think it was the first time that there had been co-leads appointed. And we were both a little perturbed at that <laughs> when, it, when we were appointed to be co-leads. But it actually, it worked out. I could not ask for a better partner. Diane always challenged me to work harder and be better. And there were so many things that I missed and would have missed and that she never missed. It's been mentioned Diane was always, always about the people that she represented. We always remembered that her constituents were renters, a lot of renters in her district, and that they rode the bus, right? A lot of heads are nodding here. She reminded us all the time. She always reminded us when we were talking about how long it took people to get to medical appointments, that it wasn't just a matter of getting in your car and driving to the appointment, that her constituents had to take the bus, and that distance mattered too. She listened to her constituents. She absolutely took their concerns to heart, and she made sure that every one of us knew about her constituents. Diane was their representative in the very truest sense of the word. 
I'm so grateful that I got to serve with Diane. I'm very grateful she was there to mentor me. As I've heard from many of you, she was a tremendous mentor to all of us. And I will miss her very, very deeply. And Mike and, uh, um, and Elaine, thank you so much for sharing her. As others have said, um, she will never be forgotten in this body. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader Winkler. Madam Speaker, the following is the resolution of the House of Representatives honoring the life and legacy of the Honorable Diane Lillian Loeffler, State Representative. Whereas Diane Loeffler was a lifelong resident of Northeast Minneapolis, graduate of Waite Park Elementary, Northeast Junior High, and Edison High School. Whereas Diane Loeffler dedicated her life to improving the lives of the most vulnerable among us, the aged, the ill, the poor, and the disenfranchised, as a public servant in many roles. Whereas Diane Loeffler was elected to the Minnesota House of Representatives in 2004 and served the people of Northeast Minneapolis with kindness, compassion, and integrity for eight terms, and together with her husband, Mike Venowitz, gave selflessly of her time and attention to all matters affecting her constituents and her colleagues in the Minnesota House of Representatives. Whereas Diane Loeffler acquired in her 15 years of legislative service deep and far-reaching knowledge of state and local human services policy, budget and delivery mechanisms that she employed on behalf of all Minnesotans. Whereas Diane Loeffler served as chair of the Property Tax Division and worked ceaselessly to ensure all Minnesotans shared in property tax fairness and to ensure the high integrity of Minnesotans' lo local property tax policies. Whereas Diane Loeffler was a tireless advocate for the Minnesota House of Representatives as an institution, worked to preserve the architectural integrity of the Minnesota Capitol on the Capitol Area Architectural and Planning Board, and brightened the House of Representatives' Capitol Chamber every spring with fresh flowers and a promise of sunlit days to come. Now, there, now, excuse me, now therefore be it resolved that the House of Representatives expresses its deepest condolences to the family, friends, and constituents of Diane Lillian Loeffler and joins in their sadness at the loss of this remarkable and vibrant public servant. Uh, Madam Speaker, members, uh, Representative Loeffler, Chief Warrant Officer Candidate Plattenberg, Chief Warrant Officer Rogers, and Chief Warrant o Officer Nord all shared a common purpose. It wasn't fame, it wasn't a desire to be written into history, it was a desire to serve those who will never know their names or never understand how their service improved their lives. This is a high calling, it's a high calling for all of us. And it is the one to which Diane Loeffler dedicated her life and should inspire all of us to do the same. May we also be dedicated to that high purpose, this legislative session. May we lead with her humility, her dedication to a cause greater than herself, and her dignity in the way that she conducted herself and how we can conduct ourselves in this institution. Uh, members, I would ask that we stand for a moment of silence. <laughs> 